All right, bet. So this is uh, Chicago Open, y'all. This is Chicago Open 2021, the same tournament I went to two years ago, 2019. This is going to be 2021 edition. Um, it opened up. Tournaments opened up. It was nice, right? So we go to Chicago. I got four and a half out of nine, 50%, which is 50%. Usually you want to do 50% or more, basically, every tournament. So I did kind of right at just 50%, right? So that's okay, you know, but I, it's all about the learning. What, what did you learn from this tournament, right? And uh, I learned a lot, actually. In fact, on one of, and also I've seen results wise that consistency is here. I now have some consistency, which is very good. Consistency meaning, are you losing every game? Are you winning every game? Are you, you know, are you um, drawing every game? Like, what is it? You know, you have to have some consistency in there. You go into National Open, I'm definitely trying to get that popping. If not, I'll be at World, though, for sure. Because it's just like it's so close and then another one and then world and then like it's a lot didn't a wonder quit a while ago not nah, a wonder did not quit in fact um he still was playing a lot actually but um not that i've seen but i've seen him you know online other tournaments stuff like that you go into the national open yeah, yeah i already read that one yeah yeah that's awesome thanks bro appreciate it yeah so uh this first round though first round i am playing catch this cast this bro i am playing a wonder liang grandmaster a Wonder Liang. Okay. So I'm playing Grandmaster A Wonder Liang first round. Now, you know, beforehand, before I became a Jedi, I remember where I was um I was thinking to myself, you know, when you face a GM, you like, all right, man, you gotta amp yourself up, you know, like man, here we go, breathe real hard. You can do this, flexing in the mirror all hard, trying to psych yourself into it. You know, I remember those days. Now, when I saw A Wonder Liang, I was like, oh, okay. Let's play. That's exactly what I said. Okay, cool. Let's play. Because I have been studying a lot. I've been working with my coach. I've been uh, doing everything necessary, right? And improving every single day. You should be looking to improve every single day. So here, when I got here, you know, I remember how I felt before. I felt, you know, before with the fear. I didn't have any fear. So it felt really good. That's step number one. When you're playing strong players, period, is the psychological part. You have to get over the fear. You know, you have to play the board. In fact, Ben Feingold used to coach my one of my first chess coaches, uh, Bill Cowden, he's a coach. I remember I was sitting with him and he said that one time. I was like 2000, probably, maybe, maybe 2000. It was like eighth grade, maybe, something like that. But he was, uh, he told him, he was like, what did he say? Um, play the board, play the board. The board will tell you what to do, basically. I remember that a long time ago. So, um, you know, years, many years later, I felt like that's how I felt with this game, this whole tournament, basically. I felt that way. Yo. Hey man, appreciate you, Devin Booker. What's good, bro? What's good, man? We just we uh, just starting the analysis here, just starting the analysis from Chicago Open, radio the um, tournament I just came from. So it's Chicago Open 2021. So yeah, this first round I got GM A Wonder Liang. I'm like, let's go, bro. Let's go. Who says that, right? So I hop in there. I play E4. In fact, in fact, actually, before we even say that, I remember you know every you have there you have an option, and they also do this. Even if you didn't select the option when you signed up to get your pairings 15, 20 minutes, usually um, to um, before the round um, to your phone. So you can she so don't have to go downstairs if you at the hotel or whatever. You can go down when you're ready. You can do extra prep, basically. So uh, the first round, it was like kind of off. Actually, I did not get the email order. In fact, when the second round came around, the first round pairings came in an email like, hey, this is who you plan. I'm like, bro, we on round two already. So they fixed it after a while. But uh, you could get a message to your phone or your email before the tournaments, before the round, just to see who you're playing before you go downstairs. The time control was an hour and 40 minutes per side or hour. I'm tripping. Uh, was it an hour and 40? It was 100, 100 minutes. Yeah, so hour and 40. Yeah, hour and 40 plus 30 second increment. Time control, yeah. Uh, chess, Prodigy, A Wonder, Liang, no less. Yeah, he's super strong. Super strong. I knew he was. A, I knew. I knew the, the accolades, everything from just, oh, I'm playing A Wonder, Liang. It's that kind of day. Let's go, right? Let's go. So, you know, um, I prepped a little bit. Just every single round, literally, I, I had enough time to prep. I mean, you have 15 minutes. That's it. They usually put the pairings out 15 minutes before the round. So you can even come to the round, which I did. I was late to every game, probably like five minutes late because I was just doing just a little bit more extra prep. And what I would do is search to see what they play and like, OK, what do they play? What are their favorites? I just kind of get a feel for their style. And that's literally what you do at the bigger when I mean, you play in an open section with the big boys. You you do want to just get a feel for the style of the person you're playing. What do they do? What are the pluses, minuses? OK, you know, what are, what is what, what's their style? Right. So I did that. And I was like, oh, A Wonder plays Carol Khan. Okay. 
All right, I'm prepped for Carol Khan. Let's see which 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 variation. Now, here's the game. In fact, the title of the video for YouTube here is going to be this way or that way. That's the name of it. So you'll see why later on. Now, here we go. E4, C6. He go Carol Khan, right? So he go Carol Khan. I go D4. He goes D5. Basic level stuff. I've played everything here. You got the E5 versions, of course. You got the captures, which I like to play. I like playing the E takes D5 and going to Bobby Fischer exchange variation. But I used to play the Bishop D3. I used to play Bishop D3 here a lot. And it was fine. I actually beat um, one of my first IMs over the board with this system, actually. But it's it's just uh, not it's not as easy anymore, especially against the rock solid G6 Bishop F5 systems that are very annoying to face. That's probably... The reason why I stopped playing the exchange in this manner was because of the of, of that rock solid G6 stuff. So um, after pawn takes D5, I actually um, I picked up this to pen off Bobinick. I have some very very in depth theory that I've studied in uh, depth. I got a very very high win rate with this rec with this uh, with this way of playing. Um, I even faced it in Levy. If you can, if y'all check the YouTube, y'all can you know see the the match I had you know with Levy in the I am not a GM speech chess championship, and I was able I was successful with this many times um, with this opening. This is very strong, very very strong opening. I got some very good wins you know online and uh, and good great positions with this opening. So here C4 right ag aggressive. This is my style, and then he plays Knight F6. Which is correct. Knight f6 is here. Okay, I've seen knight f6 a lot. Yeah, I'm a pen off guy myself. So after knight f6, knight c3. So what I prepped here, and what I knew is that he played the knight c6 version. So I went into, there's actually a Grisha line where Grisha does this uh, peace sack, actually, which is early, later on in the game, which I figured we might go into that based off of what he plays. But here, in, in fact, he actually thought right here, right here, actually, yeah, right here, after knight f6, I played knight c3. And what he did, is he thought for a little bit and i was like what is he gonna do you know because i know knight c6 was the move that from what i saw in his uh in the database and what he plays he plays this against the pen off the knight c6 one pen off course coming soon uh, i mean there's already one out that i use and a few and actually a few books as well that i use and i analyze games pen off games so maybe later of like some stuff but you know there's already material out already he was just looking at this today this morning yeah bro it's fire queen's game the only thing i know hey man just get with us to stick here with us you know he'll know more g6 version better um uh, it can be the shock it definitely can be but it, it also is a very very it's you have to be very accurate or you'll get a very bad position very quickly in the g6 lines and in fact that's what he played he did go with the g6 line here he played g6 so g6 is one of the stronger lines but uh, if, and it also it, it almost re resembles an accelerated dragon in fact that's exactly how it looks i played accelerated dragon myself so a lot of times you actually do end up breaking with d5 after the e4 c5 stuff all these things happen d5 and then takes and we do all this taking and stuff and what happens here is actually this is definitely how black should be playing g6 bishop g7 and we play knight d7 knight b6 that's usually what it is play on the isolated pawn that's the whole plan of this of this you know pawn structure of the game here you have to realize pawn structures are the gps of the game so having pawns understanding of this being an isolated pawn because i'm going to take this usually and if not i'm going to have what they call the hanging pawn structure where uh, these pawns are just weak kind of in a way so black's trying to play on the isolated pawn white's trying to play aggressive so queen to b3 is the move here i could capture but queen b3 is better so if pawn takes i take with bishop and with tempo also threatening e6 right after and i'm, I'm able to get rid of my pawn while also doing a lot of attacking. I mean, the arrows get crazy here, and they can get in trouble real fast. So, obviously, you don't take here. Now, after queen to b3, bishop g7. That's the regular move here. You would always play this usually. In fact, it is one of the accelerated dragon lines, just in a different move order, where the queen is already out on b3. I always take here. Literally, I'm following theory. Not even thinking right now. Not even thinking. Straight theory. C takes d5. He castles, right? I always go bishop e2 here. And after bishop e2, what's up, Inpour? Welcome to the stream. So bishop e2, bishop e2, this move is, is this a development move. Very simple. I'm about to go bishop f3 to defend this. And if I can, get my knight to f4 as quickly as possible. Main moves are knight to d7 and knight to, excuse me, knight a6. Yeah, knight d7 is a move, but knight a6 is, is not the best move. This for YouTube, you already know divine discipline. You already know it's going on the tube. That's right. So knight a6 is uh, not the best. And I know this in and out. I remember I was actually playing Alex Linderman. Shout out to him. I was playing him in a rapid game online in an in online tournament, right? And I got up a piece in this line. I got in some time trouble and ended up losing the game. But 
I did get a, in the same line, like the Queen B3 system with G6 beating Alex Lenderman up a piece, right? Um, in a in a line that I just knew like the back of my hand. And um, this is very, very successful line for me. It, it, the the pen off period, you have to find the opening that fits you, fits your style, and master it. And that's where pen off for me is like I have no more problems with the Carol Khan because of the pen off. But after Bishop E2, Knight A6 is not that it's not a move, but I know that it's not the best move. In fact, Knight B to D7 or Queen B6 a lot of times is, is the best for real. So I knew I was like, oh, this is slightly inaccurate. I already was feeling kind of good about that. So he played knight a6. Now after knight a6, I go bishop f3 to defend because I'm like, okay, I don't know what he's going to do. I mean, he just wanted to keep the bishop open. A lot of times they try bishop g4 because this is defending the pawn, but I still could eventually go knight e2 here anyway. Sometimes I take play. I mean, it's good. I, I'm fine. The problem here is these two pawns for him, and I can keep them as long as I want to, I can, and I can give them back. I can give one of them back when I want to, when my, my pieces are, have flourished. Now, watch this. After bishop f3, here we go. Here we go. He hit He hit me with a move, right? And luckily, I played this so much, I've seen it before, that for me, I'm like, oh, I've seen that. And then I made a move. But most people, watch this. What would you do right now if he hit you with this? You playing chess, you get hit with this move. And that's exactly what he played. He played b5. Now, remember, Levy actually played this on me, um, too. I think that was probably the first time I actually played it. it was against Levy or foul. I was like, yo, this uh, B5, what is this? And I still ended up, I think I won the game that, there, but B5 was, uh, man, B5 is a scary looking move. After B5, yeah, I played a Carol. I hate when opponents play pan off. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Posada says 92. We have A3. So let's get some, let's get, some, what do you think? What are you playing in the chat? What are we doing? B5's on the board. B5's on the board. He's just saying, take the pawn, bro. Yeah, you up one pawn. Go ahead, have another one. Have another one, big dog. Have another one. Says A Wonder Liang. So Kenty, wife and I watching you. What's up? Is Newell Eric? What's good, bro? Hey, you and wife. I appreciate that. Hope y'all doing well. Rook B eight looks nasty after knight takes B five. Queen takes B five. Correct. A four, A three, King C five. I think you. You mean knight C five, Robert? You know nothing. You know it's White's move right now. You know that, right? And this is the c5 square queen a3 queen a3 okay that's face block it's premium 100 percent natural that's not a move big fella don't do that to yourself uh just take it honestly d shock says take it knight c5 yeah the knight is it's white hey it's okay robert we here we're gonna do this one step at a time big fella okay the knight it's white's move here it's white's move so this knight cannot go to c5 it's okay it's okay robert it's gonna be all right is it simple to play as d6 when they wouldn't play d5? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I need 10 years of experience to be able to <laughs> D6. So let's go through some lines here. Right. D6. If I go d6, I'm hitting the rook, right? Obvious. But he just steps out of the way. Rook b8. Bam. And then he defends b5. Now, when I take, take, take. Yeah, this could be here. But I just helped him develop his, his pieces. <laughs> so you would have resigned after b5. Couldn't you? Yeah, I just helped him develop his pieces. Like, why would I help him develop his stuff? You know what I mean? Why? Why would I help him develop his stuff? He gets more active when I allow him to do that. In fact, I am the one actually now down on development after D6, Rook B8, Pawn takes, takes with check 92. I mean, you know, and plus this is isolated. But he can also play Bishop B7. He's He literally is developed now. After Bishop B7, I am actually behind on development. Yeah, I'm still up a pawn, right? Three, six. Yeah, I'm up a pawn, but, you know, B4, compensation is real. Compensation is too much here. Too much compensation. So D6 doesn't work. Knight takes B5. In fact, I didn't like it all because Rook B8 hitting the knight. And then I have A4, but then Knight C7. Look at this. Bam. Now A6 is hit. He hit in D5 too at the same time and Bishop B7. Like, what, what did I get into? Why did you take this? Like, why would you take this? Bishop C7, I think, maybe looks kind of cool. I might have 98. Strangely enough. Strangely enough, right? Hitting d4 now, like this is this is too much, bro. I'm not even gonna take this pawn just because a pawn is there doesn't mean you have to take it. And I, and after b5, let's check the engine here. The engine says, do not take this pawn. They like, bro, don't take this pawn. It's not even there. Top three lines don't even have it anywhere close. Anywhere close. Someone give me a stretcher. Oh yeah, here, let me send it to you. Let's get a stretcher to this man asap to his address on file. There it is. That's for you. Bishop e2. Bishop e2. Why would we move it twice? D shock, right? We already moved it twice. So moving it a third time? We out here looking crazy for real. 
Rook b8 look real nasty. Correct. Queen takes b5. I run into rook b8 as well. Rook b8. Then I got to move the queen. The file is open. He goes bishop b7. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not trying to get out here and look crazy. You know, knight b4 followed by bishop f5 is there too. How fast am I getting to the castle? I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble, right? So here it is. Shout out to anyone in the chat that said knight e2. I just said develop. I don't even care. I'm up a pawn. So what, right? You still have to develop. And I also had to look at the b4 option. Of course, B4 option is a thing. So I just played knight E2. I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to get out the way and have a nice day. Very easy. So knight G to E2, he played rook B8. So he defended. He did defend the pawn, maybe threatening B4. What do I do in this position? White to move. What's the move, y'all? What's the move? Let's go. This is very interactive. This is how we do our analysis every time. So if you're new, welcome to the stream. Hit the follow button, definitely. And um, yeah, we are uh, we analyze it. So white to move. White to move. What are we doing? We got 92, original plan, that's right. Castles, we got castle, castle, or knight d1. C4, okay, so only thing that can go to C4 is the queen. And as soon as you make that, hit the clock and get up promptly and walk out of the room, get in your car, and go home. You are done in this tournament. Don't even come back. Don't even come back. Castle, bishop at four. Castle, bishop at four. Okay, a3. <laughs> You're very tired. Yeah. Yeah. You you just go home, go to sleep. You're done with this tournament. You're done. Bishop F4 developed with tempo. Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Actually, you guys are right. Great moves. Everyone has great moves here. In fact, all of these could have been played except Queen C4. And a Knight D1 probably is not the best either. So castles, though. I'm out the way. Have a nice day. Just get out the way. Just castle. I'm, I'm focused on development. So keep it moving. Castle. Now after castle, he played B4. So he's like, all right, I'm going for it because he's going to follow up with probably bishop to b7. He's also trying to take my knight and hit my queen here, right? Bam. Okay, so I got some moves. I'm not in a dilemma yet, but white to move, guys. White to move. You play a wonder liang. He hits you with b4. You got to make a move. What are we doing? Your knight is in danger. I set my brain fuel. Oh, man. I love that alpha, alpha punch. Mm, that's good right there. Hold on. One more. Oh, that's amazing. That's good. We got 94, 94, knight a4, knight a4, knight a4, knight a4. Everybody going crazy. Knight a4, knight a4, knight a4, canty, knight a4. Whoa, hold up. Jules 357, what's your rating? Hey, girl, what's your rating? Uh, let me, I just want to know what your rating is one time. Let me get that rating real quick. Low. What? What's the number? What's the number? I just want to know the number. Because, you know, I think, you know, I'm 2210 uh, FIDE, and, you know, that's low for me. I'm definitely not happy with that rating. 950, okay. All right. So, Jules was the first one to get it right, actually. It's Bishop F4. In fact, Bishop F4 is very strong. And Bishop F4, that's why I asked you, what's your rating real quick? Because that's a very strong move. In fact, Bishop F4, why did I do this? Well, I'm also developing. I'm first, number one, I'm developing. Number two, I'm developing with tempo. And they say, they always say, um, you know, uh, equal or stronger threat. That's what I teach to my students or EST here, where we're actually, yes, just because my knight is attacked does not mean I have to move it. Can I find something of equal or greater value to attack? So the bishop f4 hits the rook. So if pawn takes c3, I now take on b8. If pawn takes b2, I actually could just take the pawn, to be honest. There is no discoveries. There's nothing crazy. There's nothing going on. You can't move this. I mean, you could go bishop g4 and kind of do this, but I could just step out of the way. I don't even care, right? Yeah, you damage my structure, but I'm up in exchange and I'm still up a pawn. Like, you know, so I think I'm up a pawn, but it's fine. Like, I'm good to go. I'm good to go there, right? So bishop f4 is very strong. Bishop f4 is a very strong move after uh, pawn takes knight again. Bishop takes, and if knight takes, which I calculated, I just take the knight. And if you move the bishop, I take the queen. This is hanging still, right? So takes, queen takes b2. I mean, variation of the same where the bishop's just not on g4 yet. And I have a great, great game. I'm feeling good here. I'm feeling really, really good. So bishop f4. So at here, at bishop f4, I'm like, oh, I'm on you. I'm on you, big dog. I'm on you, big dog. Okay, like, right? I am on your head, my guy. You know, and when Bishop F4 was played, I was like, uh-oh, hold on, hold on, hold my T. You know, hey, hold my coat, hold my robe real quick. Hey, hold my saber, my guy. Because this this, this spot to get real. I knew that if I can keep this potential up, and a lot of times I always like to ask people or say, you know, when I'm teaching students, is how many times can you attack something, right? If you can look to do that, a lot of times you can get even the strongest players in lots of trouble 
and you get better positions because of the attacking chances you get than Knight takes, right? Yeah. How come your USA is different from your FIDE rating? Because that's how it is. Uh, USCF and FIDE are rated differently. FIDE is international. You have to think about that. FIDE is everybody in the world. You, um, everyone, every federation under one. U US got their own. You know, Canada got their own federation. Everybody got their own federation. Hold your brain fuel. All right, hold up. Hold on. Let me let me cheese. Okay, got you. Brain fuel. Same thing. That's right. All right. Hold your brain fuel. Hold my brain fuel, bro. Hold my brain. Hold the diet. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. All right. So here we go. Bishop f4, right? After bishop f4, he played rook b6. Because he really don't have an option, right? Like, it, it, I think even if he goes here, I, now I think d6 does win. I think d6 is looking real good. Like, look at the bishops here. Yeah, you can take my knight. I'm going to take the rook. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good out here. So, um, after bishop f4, he played rook b6. Now, now knight a4. Bam. Tempo. Bam. Make him rook going crazy. I mean, just moving everywhere. Knight a4. I got to get my knight to c5 here. And figure this out. So now there's a number of moves to make. And you want to try to be as accurate as possible here. Rook to b5. Your move, guys. What's up, chat? What are we doing? White to move. Hey. Hey. Let's go. Yo, appreciate your AXR. AXR with the two months. Let's go. Appreciate that, sub. Tier 1. Uh, knight e to c3. Okay. We got ac1 from always retweet. We got knight e to c3, knight c5 from party bus. We're going to go over all of these. Bishop e3, queen c4, queen d3, knight c3. Okay, so these are kind of all the moves, right? Kind of all the moves there. You kind of set them there. Knight c5, let's rule that out now. Knight c5, he just takes it. It's just a free pawn. Why would I give the pawn back and then I didn't get anything for it? And he's also now hitting this pawn. In fact, this sequence, I was like, dang. I mean, you know, I knew he was super strong, but I'm like, yo, he, he hitting this. He about to hit this pawn. Like... He about to hit this pawn, my guy. If you think you was hitting a pawn, like this man is hitting that pawn, right? So with everything he got. So you got to be very careful here. So knight c5 just gives it back to him, and he's hitting this one. That's a scary one, right? Then we have queen d3, which attacks the rook, but I think rook a5, which I'm not feeling anymore. Now I'm getting hit. You have to think about this. How many times can you hit them without them hitting you? If you can answer that and actually answer it correctly each time, you'll get a better position. Think about that. That's a deep one. How many times can you hit them before they hit you? So uh, queen d3, you know, I'm hitting him, but then he hits me. Then I defend. Oh, let me hit you again, can't he? And then pieces just start getting out, and then you lose. That's just how chess goes when you're playing the big dogs. So you got to realize this and understand this ahead of time. So rook to b5, queen d3 doesn't work. Queen c4, virtually the same move. Hitting here, um, where I got to defend it somehow. Knight c5 maybe now, which I did think about. And after knight c5, I forgot. I didn't like this move for some reason. I didn't like the queen being here. For some reason, I didn't like it. It was a very strange one. Uh, nice c3. We got nice c3. Uh, nice c3. Right. So, but this is what I didn't like about nice c3. If I go with this one, he just goes back to b6. Right. So, knight e to c3. He goes rook a5. Now, get this. My knight's hanging. My knight is hanging. So, what do I do? I got to move this knight. That's why I didn't play this move. My knight's hanging, bro. And then, you know, then what? And then I move the knight. Now, I hang the pawn. Oh, and just when you thought you was doing so good. Right. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So, in fact, everyone here to say rook a to c1 is 100% correct. Now, what should black do here? Let's see. Let's let's just see if y'all paying attention, attention, you know, if y'all paying attention for real, for real. Okay, rook a to c1, black to move. What does black do in this position, y'all? What's up, Mickey? Mickey dead guys in the chat, just like that. What's up, dog? Rook a to c1. Okay, we got bishop b7. Okay, bishop b7, bishop b7, rook is better, bishop d7 from Greg, bishop b7, knight takes d5, I don't know why they modded that, knight takes d5, yeah, yeah. Uh, resign so can't get his rating points, hey man, I would appreciate that, Poseidon says never mind, bishop f4, <laughs> the bishop's on f4 now, Jules, <laughs> you ain't gonna get us this time, the bishop is on f4, no, you mean for black though, bishop f5, okay, that's what you meant, that's what you meant, bishop f5, that's probably what you meant, yeah, knight d5, take the pawn. Knight takes d5 is just profane, but chat, queen d7. All right, so here we go, right? So if somebody would have did this, knight takes d5, the reason why I went rook c1 is number one is I have to try to get this knight to c5 because it's advanced and the better square, I would have to get it here immediately as quick as possible. And knight, it also deters knight takes d5 because now I shouldn't do bishop takes d5 
because he can take with the queen and I don't win a piece. In fact, the only move here that wins a piece is rook takes c8 first. Hit that man with a move, big fella. Flex real hard. Send that man a stretcher. Oh my goodness. That's a wrap just like that. So after queen takes, bishop takes d5 and we live. And that's GG. I mean, I mean, he's still going to play on. I'm up a piece though. I'm up a full piece at this point. His pieces are gross in a way. And I'm just up. Rook c1, I can come to the file. Everything's winning. I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. Right? And you have to respond to this because I'm hitting the queen. And you, you don't have any in, in, good in-between moves. Nothing you can do. You move the queen, I take with check. Right? So you have to take this. And then I take back and I get two for one. So yeah, you got the rook, but I got two pieces. Right? Yeah, and of course, two pieces for the rook here. In fact, actually, if you look at the engine here, the engine, what does the engine say? Right? Engine says right now it's uh, rook takes, takes, bishop takes. So right now it's plus three. It's a plus three position, which is, I mean, a piece, which is a piece. It's still very playable for black. He should still play on, of course. You know, you're looking for mistakes, obviously. But uh, white's definitely in the driver's seat. Definitely in the driver's seat because you're up a piece. So he moves bishop f5. Actually, bishop f5, let's actually take a look at that one. Rook a to c1. Well, bishop f5, I didn't expect at all because it just doesn't do. It's not like, remember, you have to hit back. You got to always want to swing, you know, and attack things. Bishop f5 actually doesn't attack anything. It's almost as good as playing h6 or bishop d7 it just gives me a free move you have to remember that you do want to keep the attack up as much as possible so after rook a to c1 in fact the best move is bishop to b7 attacking the pawn once again this is why i play rook to a to c1 so now i can block the connection between the rook and the pawn even though he can still take this pawn but now i have knight takes b7 coming knight takes b7 coming right and I knew he was going to take this because this knight's hanging too. There's a lot of stuff hanging, right? So he's going to get his pawn back. Now watch this. This is why you always give the pawn back when you want to, not when you have to. Or like, uh, you know, not when you have to, but like you, know, you give the pawn back when you want to is the good thing about being up a pawn. So now there's here's the time where I kind of have to give the pawn back, but I'm doing it in a way that it's going to favor my position. So after knight to c5, he does capture, capture, and then he takes. He says, let's go for it. And now, guys, this is where you have to really... Go into the think tank, go into the hyperbolic chamber with some other Jedi, and you got to really figure this out. Why it's a move? Let's go. What's the move? I came up with a combinese right here. Queen uh, is un, is is in trouble, obviously, right? Bishop takes d5, so, and uh, bishop takes d5. Like, what do you do, right? Why to move? Queen to d3 from Fuzzle Snuggy Kitty. Knight c3. Okay, that's face blockage 101. 100% face blockage, Kiaros. Don't even do it to yourself. Rook c4. Okay, rook c4. Uh, yeah, that's face blockage too. Queen d5. Okay, yeah. Jumping off the deep end all the way down with a smile. A4. That's not a move. Queen a4 actually hits the rook. Okay, that is a move there. Yeah, queen a4, queen d5. We have queen d3 from Chronic. Queen d3 from Fuzzy Snuggle. Queen d3 from Gotch. Bishop takes bishop. All right, so remember, guys, I'm a big fan of threats. I'm an aggressive player. And I'm always, big vibes, what's up, baby? What's good? Queen e3 from Jules, rig d1. I am always into aggressive chess. If I can sack something, you know I'm going to do it. If I, can, if I can attack it and make it complicated, you know I'm going to do it. Those are my kind of games. So I play the openings that actually um, coincide with that as well. Besides d4. Nowadays, against d4, I have to play more solid stuff because it's harder. It's just tougher. And you don't get away with it much anymore. Yeah, it, with the against d4 so you have to play like super solid but you still even then you can play aggressive and go into aggressive lines so Kanti just got a 13 today hey good job bro a little gray sales that's what's up rook after d1 uh no in fact i will lose an exchange there the best move is queen to d3 so shout out to you if you said that i'm hitting the the rook and temporarily actually kind of pinning but the rook is the real thing i'm hitting the rook for real he goes rook a5 which i did see now think of tempo. I'm a big fan of the tempo. Like I really live by the tempo. How many times can I attack you? Bam. Rook F to D1. Right? Rook F to D1. He's pinning it. I'm pinning him. He in trouble. He is in trouble right now. So he needs to defend this bishop. If he moves the bishop, I'm going to take the queen. And then you take back. And then I take the rook. And GG start a new game. Easy. Light work. So he had to go E6. E6. And now right here, this is what it took me like, I think I thought for like 20 minutes because I was looking at a whole line to see if this works. And in fact, it did. Why to move y'all? Why to move? By the way, Kenzie, what do you think about doing visualization exercises in chess? I think anything you do in chess will definitely work. Everything works. Everything. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's just how it goes. Visualization exercises will definitely work. Bishop D6, play F6. That's not a move. Absolutely. Bishop D6, Bishop D6. A lot of Bishop D6s here. Bishop d6, we got e6, we got c6. Bishop d6, okay. 
Bishop g5 from Kiaros. These are all good moves. Knight d4. Bishop d6 is instinct. These are good moves, guys. Good moves. A3. From S. S's. SC Spectre. A3, bishop b5, a3, g5, c6. H3. All right, here we go. Here we go. So I'm going to tell you right now. I spent 20 minutes. Why? Why? Because I went into the hyperbolic chamber, you know, and um, I put on my robe and, you know, had my saber on my side. And I came out with something very, very dangerous when I came out of the think tank. It became very nasty here. And I hit this man with a move and I said, A3. And you're like, A3? What is this? Think about this. Why is A3 so strong? Why is A3 so strong? Well, the, the reason is because he is now... His rook's trapped. Look at his trap. Look at his rook. Look at his rook. Okay, what do you mean, Canty? What if he just takes the pawn? Because he does. And then I go B4. Hit that man with a move. Oh, my goodness. B4 for the score. I saw all of this, right? I saw all of this. Okay, remember the title, the title of this video for the YouTube is This Way or That Way. Watch this, right? Okay, so I'm playing A Wonder Liang. You know, I'm almost sweating because I'm about to beat this 2600 GM. So I'm like, let's go. Okay, B4 is on the board. I saw this. He plays Rook A4. Okay, Rook's trap. What do we do? White's move. What do we do? And this can get very scary if you miscalculate by a hair. By a hair. Queen B5. That's right. Little Gray Sales is correct. B4, great move. Oh, man, that was X clam. Double X clam. Queen B5. At this point, it was multiple people watching our game, too. Like, you know, some of the top boards, like, yo, Canty hit this man, bro. Hey, man, Canty swinging at him, dog. Like, yo, hey, who is this Canty guy, right? Queen B5, knight C3. So, Queen B5 hitting the rook. All right. So, rook is hanging. Rook is hanging. He has no way to defend it besides Queen E8. So, Queen E8 defends it. Remember, I saw this in the think tank. I went into the think tank. I came out. Uh, as, a, as a very strong Jedi, found this combination. And after Queen E8, black to white to move, what do we do? Yeah, Bishop's pin, Rick takes D1. C6, that's right. C6 is next. I play C6. Okay, right. And then he plays Bishop B3. It's getting very crazy. It's getting nuts right here. It is getting insane. White to move. White to, what do you do here, y'all? And I found the best move. I found the best move because one of them is a straight blunder. I think because of what again? Oh, yeah, he had this option. I'm so glad. Like, this is when you play over the board chess, guys. One thing you have to realize is you have to think. You got to really think of all the possibilities and anything that they may have in, in, in store that they can hit you with. Uh, Rick D8, we got Rick D3. Rick, uh, okay, we got C7, Rick D3, Knight C3. So you have to be careful. If you move this Rick off the back rank, A2 is almost winning. So if I do anything like rook d3, a2, and I'm like, oh, snap, he bought the queen and the bishops here. So this is very, very, very scary. Very risky in my type of position. It's very sharp stuff, you know, but very scary, right? So we got rook, rook d3 is not it. Rook d3, you in trouble. Rook d8, rook d8, uh, rook d8, it looks cool, but I just take it. Knight f4, that's knight f4 is right here. Knight d4, knight d4, you actually face blockage. Watch this. In fact, I was about to play knight d4. And then I saw a6, and I was like, oh my goodness, I almost blocked in my face. Knight d4, and if you would have played a6, I would have sat there and probably just slammed the table. Like, just, you know, and I wouldn't do this. But in my head, I would just be stand up and just, you know, throw the board like that and just walk away. Because a6 is just hitting the queen. You have to move your queen off. And then when you move the queen, I take the rook. And you're just losing, basically. I, I can try to queen, but he's going to queen. There is not a, uh, uh, he's going the queen. There's no way to stop this with the bishop connection and the rook on this. Like that's not. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Table flip. Out of there, chronic. Out of there, my guy. Anti, what's up? What's good? DJ, lol. What's up? All right. So I didn't play knight d4 because I actually had to see that. And this is why you know I spent the extra time because right here my nerves was really kind of going because I'm like I know I got him. I know I got him. Like I know I got my man's right now. 2600 dm about to go down to the Jedi in front of everybody. I'm ready, right? I'm ready to hit this man. So, you know, you have to calm your nerves here and not just move. Because knight d4 was very tempting. Very tempting. Because it hits the... It, it really, if he takes the rook, why I like this so much, is if he takes, I just take. You know, and uh, it's, it's looking kind of cool here. But I didn't like the fact that it just didn't seem right. It didn't feel the best. It did not feel the best. So, in fact, the best move, which I did play here, is knight to c3. I played knight to c3, right? Bam. Knight to c3. 
Blunder main three and turn once because I got excited. Yeah, you have to calm your nerves and you literally have to just look. Just remember, you know, they always say, what's the saying? The the hardest game to win is a one game. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a real, real quote. Knight c3 hitting the rook. So rook's trapped. So he has to do something. He plays knight d5, right? Knight d5. So I look at everything here. I'm like, if I do knight takes, if I take with the knight, I'm not, the rook's not trapped anymore. In fact, I'm in a lot of trouble. So I need to have this knight to take. So I take with the bishop pawn takes and then right here guys right here this is called the, the right here white to move by the way so you can put this in the chat if you're ready white to move what do you play here now this is why this um this uh video is actually titled this way or that way for youtube this is exactly why this is the moment where you go this way or that way this way or that way okay we got rookie one bishop d6 rookie one off a draw okay rookie one this is a Jedi puzzle. Yeah, this is called this way or that way. This way or that way. Offer draw, rookie one, rookie one, bishop d6, rookie one, cardiac kid, what's the deal? Knight take rook, rook d2, commercial break. <laughs> Knight takes a4, rookie one. Nice ad, yo. <laughs> well, we're still here anyway. Look, we still here. We're trying to figure this out. Uh, rookie one is interesting. All right, here we go. Here we go. Title of the video is this way or that way, right? Right. One of these is the door to life. The other one is the door to the deep end, to the deep side, to death, to game over. One of these is rookie one or, or knight a4. So, in fact, I chose. Here it is. Y'all ready? I chose the wrong one. Drop the brain fuel. You know, caught it. I chose the wrong one, right? I chose the wrong one. In fact, right now, I'm completely winning. I'm completely winning. Yo, what's good? What's good? What's good? KXT TV, thanks for the raid. Thanks for the raid. You're coming in right at a critical moment right here where I was beating a Wonder Liang. It's like plus three in this position. All I had to do was take the Rook. And this is exactly what I was thinking at first. I was going to take the Rook, right? And after takes, Bishop takes D1. I saw this happening. Bishop takes D1. And then after Rook takes D1, um it was uh a4 or a2 was what i was thinking was gonna happen i was gonna play bishop d6 this was all this was all calculated i was gonna play here he was gonna queen i was gonna take he was gonna take back i was gonna take here because there's no mate because my queen gets back and now i'm queening and this is the position that would have happened now here yeah it's not that easy you know but i'm still definitely winning here it's plus three uh plus please well, I just uh, bitch donated to eat 24 tacos straight. Wow. Yikes. 24 tacos straight. I hope you're okay. You know, I hope you're all right there. Yeah, don't eat nothing else. Just don't eat anything else. Definitely don't eat anything else. So here, you know, this is the line that I calculated that I should have went for. But this is what I did. I played rookie one and I was done. On the spot. On the spot. In fact, it's not losing. It's actually just equal. But the shock factor afterwards of what happened is what made me lose and miscalculate. In fact, I was only thinking of him either taking on c3 or moving the queen. Taking on c3 or moving the queen. Reason why, if he moves the queen, I just take the rook here, and I'm doing excellent. This is this is a better version of everything, because now he can't take the rook. And if he takes this way, okay, this works too, because I, I was able to calculate rook takes e8. I'm taking with check. You have to remember that. Anything with check is better than anything else, because now when he plays a2, to play here, I'm, I'm, I'm mating him because I'm taking with check. But in fact, the only move that I didn't calculate and the one that he played was queen takes e1. And after he played this, now it's different. Rook takes and bishop takes. And right here, believe it or not, it's actually equal. It's equal. But here, the shock factor of me like, I can't believe I just blew this game. I'm about to knock everything off the table. What if I knock everything off the table? Would everybody look at me? That probably is not the way to go. Let me just pour water all over it. Let me just say something very loud. Scream on the way out. You know, you know, I might, I might withdraw, right? You know, because you're just shocked that just, just happened. Completely winning position, beating 2600 GM, a wonder Liang, about to smash him, right? I'm doing great here. Winning position. Then you play Ricky one and he takes it. And now you like, oh snap, I didn't calculate that one. And in fact, this is a draw, but you have to find the draw. You have to find it. And I went the wrong way. I actually went Bishop D6, which loses. Now, believe it or not, it's minus 10 after Bishop D6 unbelievable but bishop h6 miraculously doing the same thing in a way is actually equal 
very strange. His chess is just terrible sometimes. A2, which is which is the move he played, because I played bishop d6 and he did go a2. So after bishop h6, now I have queen c5, which attacks the bishop and made it at the same time. That's the difference in making it a draw. I'm like, bro, what? You gotta be kidding me. You have to be kidding every part of my life right now. Unbelievable. And now after bishop g7, bishop takes, king takes, I got queen c3 check. Queen c3 check, king g8, and I can go c7. And now this is draw-like. This is draw-like because he's still trying to queen, but I can queen. White's still a kind of a favorite. It's kind of nuts. It's kind of nuts, right? But in fact, all I had to do, guys, this is why it's called this way or that way, is all I had to do here was take the rook, which was my first thought anyway. But I was like, let's just go rookie one. Let's just do it. It seems fine. And he took it. I should have just played knight takes a4. Simplify. That's what you do when you're playing strong players is go for the simpler position where you're still winning, but simpler. So it eliminates these type of options. And I went for rookie one and I was done. Here it is. Takes, takes. I went bishop d6. He played a2. I took on b on f8, hoping he would like take and I could get some type of like, I was hoping he would do this. Bishop, but of course, and then I have bishop h6 because now if queening, I mean, look how nuts this game is. Now he's made it like this is ridiculous, right? I was like, yo, if this game, this is like a game going down in history. It still does. It still is a game that goes down in history here. But that was just a blunder after rookie one. And now after round, um, bishop takes, all he has to do is queen, which he does. He queens. So now he's threatening mate himself. And I can't move this bishop. I don't have any tricks. I don't have anything, anything. I have to do something. And right here, I just resigned because I didn't have anything else to do. I don't have anything else to do. And watch this. If I take the queen, I'm not made it, but the game's over. You just take all my pieces. Takes, takes, and it just takes. It just takes. C7, oh, you thought you was getting away. Check, flex real hard. Bishop A6, we in a mix, start a new game. Right? I can't, I can't. Because I thought I could get away. If my king was on G1, imagine, right, if my king was right here, right here. Like, let's just make a random move and put the king on G1. Right? So now look at this. Look, right, he actually here, he can't stop the queen. If if the king's over one extra square, he can't he can't stop me. So I thought I was able to save it, but he had this little check and come back and game's over. Right. Here, I was hurt. I was so hurt that I was like, bro, don't don't nobody talk to me. Don't anyone talk to me for the rest of life right now. I was over it after a few hours. All right. And calm down, eat some food, lock myself in the room, study till the next round, because I was very, very angry. Where I was winning this game. All I had to do was knight takes a4. First rounds. Way to start a tournament, right? Taking down a Wonder Liang. And I lost. I lost because of the blunder there. This way or that way. So that was crazy. Second guess your instinct. Yeah, I did Mickey dead, guys. But it was something to learn from. And it's a good game. Putting it in the books there. And I was like, well, you know what? That let me know, though, that I'm playing very, very, very good chess. So that was round one. Um, this way or that way. So round two is going to be on the next stream.